Morning person. You might have Neanderthal genes to thank. Hundreds of genetic variants carried by Neanderthals and Denisovans are shared by people who like to get up early. Neanderthals were morning people, a new study suggests. And some humans today who like getting up early might credit genes they inherited from their Neanderthal ancestors. The new study compared DNA in living humans with genetic material retrieved from Neanderthal fossils. It turns out that Neanderthals carried some of the same clock-related genetic variants as do people who report being early risers. Since the 1990s, studies of Neanderthal DNA have exposed our species' intertwined history. About 700,000 years ago, our lineages split apart, most likely in Africa. While the ancestors of modern humans largely stayed in Africa, the Neanderthal lineage migrated into Eurasia. About 400,000 years ago, the population split in two. The hominins who spread west became Neanderthals. Their cousins to the east evolved into a group known as Denisovans. The two groups lived for hundreds of thousands of years, hunting game and gathering plants, before disappearing from the fossil record about 40,000 years ago. By then, Modern humans had expanded out of Africa, sometimes interbreeding with Neanderthals and Denisovans. And today, fragments of their DNA can be found in most living humans. Research carried out over the past few years by John Capra, a geneticist at the University of California, San Francisco, and other scientists suggested that some of those genes passed on a survival advantage. Immune genes inherited from Neanderthals and Denisovans, for example, might have protected them from new pathogens they had not encountered in Africa. Dr. Capra and his colleagues were intrigued to find that some of the genes from Neanderthals and Denisovans that became more common over generations were related to sleep. For their new study, published in the journal Genome Biology and Evolution, they investigated how these genes might have influenced the daily rhythms of the extinct hominins. Inside the cells of every species of animal, hundreds of proteins react with each other over the course of each day, rising and falling in a 24-hour cycle. They not only control when we fall asleep and wake up, but also influence our appetite and metabolism. To explore the circadian rhythms of Neanderthals and Denisovans, drive, Capra and his colleagues looked at 246 genes that helped to control the body clock. They compared the versions of the genes in the extinct hominins to the ones in modern humans. The researchers found over 1,000 mutations that were unique only to living humans or to Neanderthals and Denisovans. Their analysis revealed that many of these mutations probably had important effects on how the body clock operated. The researchers predicted, for example, that some body clock proteins that are abundant in our cells were much scarcer in the cells of Neanderthals and Denisovans. Next, the scientists looked at the small number of body clock variants that some living people have inherited from Neanderthals and Denisovans. To see what effects those variants had on people, they probed the UK Biobank, a British database holding the genomes of half a million volunteers. Along with their DNA, the volunteers provided answers to a long list of health-related questions, including whether they were early risers or night owls. To Dr. Capra's surprise, almost all the ancient body clock variants increased the odds that the volunteers were morning people. That was really the most exciting moment of the study, when we saw that, Dr. Capra said, geography might explain why the ancient hominins were early risers. Early humans lived in Africa, fairly close to the equator, where the duration of days and nights stays roughly the same over the course of the year. But Neanderthals and Denisovans moved into higher latitudes, where the day became longer in the summer and shorter in the winter. Over hundreds of thousands of years, their circadian clocks may have adapted to the new environment. When modern humans expanded out of Africa, they also faced the same challenge of adapting to higher latitudes. After they interbred with Neanderthals and Denisovans, some of their descendants inherited body clock genes better suited to their new homes. 
All of these conclusions, however, stem from a database limited to British people. Dr. Capra is starting to look at other databases of volunteers with other ancestries. If the links hold up, drive. Capra hopes ancient body clocks can inspire some ideas about how we can adapt to the modern world, where circadian rhythms are disrupted by night shifts and glowing smartphones. These disruptions don't just make it hard to get a good night's sleep, they can also raise the risk of cancer, obesity and a host of other disorders. Michael Danman, an evolutionary geneticist at the University of Tartu in Estonia who was not involved in the new study, said one way to test drive. Capra's variants would be to engineer various human cells in the lab so that their genes were more like those of Neanderthals and Denisovans. Then scientists could grow clusters of the cells and watch them go through their daily cycles. This step forward not only advances our knowledge of how Neanderthal DNA influences present-day humans, he said, but also offers a pathway to expanding our understanding of Neanderthal biology itself. Ancestors of modern humans interbred with extinct hominins, study finds. The ancestors of modern humans interbred with Neanderthals and another extinct line of humans known as the Denisovans at least four times in the course of prehistory, according to an analysis of global genomes published Thursday in the journal Science. The interbreeding may have given modern humans genes that bolstered immunity to pathogens, the authors concluded. This is yet another genetic nail in the coffin of our oversimplistic models of human evolution, said Carl's Lollaweza Fox, a research scientist at the Institute of Evolutionary Biology in Barcelona, Spain, who was not involved in the study. The new study expands on a series of findings in recent years showing that the ancestors of modern humans once shared the planet with a surprising number of near relatives, lineages like the Neanderthals and Denisovans that became extinct tens of thousands of years ago. Before disappearing, however, they interbred with our forebears on at least several occasions. Today, we carry DNA from these encounters. The first clues to ancient interbreeding surfaced in 2010, when scientists discovered that some modern humans, mostly Europeans, carried DNA that matched material recovered from Neanderthal fossils. Later studies showed that the forebears of modern humans first encountered Neanderthals after expanding out of Africa more than 50,000 years ago. But the Neanderthals were not the only extinct humans that our own ancestors found. A finger bone discovered in a Siberian cave, called Denisova, yielded DNA from yet another group of humans. Research later indicated that all three groups, modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans, shared a common ancestor who lived roughly 600,000 years ago. And, perhaps no surprise, some ancestors of modern humans also interbred with Denisovans. Some of their DNA has survived in people in Melanesia, a region of the Pacific that includes New Guinea and the islands around it. Those initial discoveries left major questions unanswered, such as how often our ancestors interbred with Neanderthals and Denisovans. Scientists have developed new ways to study the DNA of living people to tackle these mysteries. Joshua M. Aki, a geneticist at the University of Washington, and his colleagues analyzed a database of 1,488 genomes from people around the world. The scientists added 35 genomes from people in New Britain and other Melanesian islands in an effort to learn more about Denisovans in particular. The researchers found that all of the non-Africans in their study had Neanderthal DNA, while the Africans had very little or none. That finding supported previous studies. But when Dr. Aki and his colleagues compared DNA from modern Europeans, East Asians and Melanesians, they found that each population carried its own distinctive mix of Neanderthal genes. The best explanation for these patterns, the scientists concluded, was that the ancestors of modern humans acquired Neanderthal DNA on three occasions. The first encounter happened when the common ancestor of all non-Africans interbred with Neanderthals. The second occurred among the ancestors of East Asians and Europeans, 
after the ancestors of Melanesians split off. Later, the ancestors of East Asians, but not Europeans, interbred a third time with Neanderthals. Earlier studies had hinted at the possibility that the forebears of modern humans had multiple encounters with Neanderthals, but hard data had been lacking. A lot of people have been arguing for that, but now they're really providing the evidence for it, said Rasmus Nielsen, a geneticist at the University of California, Berkeley, who was not involved in the new study. The Melanesians took a different course. After a single interbreeding with Neanderthals, drive. A key found, their ancestors went on to interbreed just once with Denisovans as well. Where that encounter could have taken place remains an enigma. The only place Denisovan remains have been found is Siberia, a long way from New Guinea. It is possible that Denisovans range down to Southeast Asia, drive. A key said, crossing paths with modern humans who later settled in Melanesia. Dr. Aki and his colleagues also identified some regions of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA that became more common in modern humans as generations passed, suggesting that they provided some kind of a survival advantage. Many of the regions contain immune system genes, drive. Aki noted, as modern humans are spreading out across the world, they're encountering pathogens they haven't experienced before, he said. Neanderthals and Denisovans may have had genes that were adapted to fight those enemies. Maybe they really helped us survive and thrive in these new environments, he said. Dr. Aki and his colleagues found that Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA was glaringly absent from four regions of the modern human genome. That absence may signal that these stretches of the genome are instrumental in making modern humans unique. Intriguingly, one of those regions includes a gene called FOXP2, which is involved in speech. Scientists suspect that Neanderthals and Denisovans were not the only extinct races our ancestors interbred with. Ping H. S. Yun Shea, a biologist at the University of Arizona, and his colleagues reported last month that the genomes of African pygmies contained pieces of DNA that came from an unknown source within the last 30,000 years. Dr. Aki and his colleagues are now following up with an analysis of African populations. This potentially allows us to find new twigs on the human family tree, he said.